Hi everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast we'll be continuing our coverage of Chapter 6 with the focus on bone growth and remodeling. Bone growth in length, called interstitial growth, occurs only at the epiphyseal plates, also known as the growth plates, and these are located at the metaphyses of the long bones. These are layers of hyaline cartilage cells called chondrocytes that divide and grow until they close, meaning they stop dividing sometime during age 18 in women to around age 21 in men, but that can occasionally go a little bit longer into the mid-20s. In women, the plate usually closes one to two years earlier than in men. First, cartilage on the epiphyseal side of the growth plate grows in length. And secondly, cartilage on the diaphyseal side of the growth plate is replaced with bone by endochondral ossification, which we reviewed in the previous podcast. The structure of the epiphyseal plate includes four zones, and in order of their location from the epiphyseal side closer to the epiphysis, the head of the long bone, towards the diaphyseal side, closer to the diaphysis or shaft of the long bone, the zones are the zone of resting cartilage, zone of proliferating cartilage, the zone of hypertrophic cartilage, and finally the zone of calcified cartilage. And here we have at the diaphysis true bone tissue. In the zone of resting cartilage, we see that this layer is closest to the epiphysis and contains small chondrocytes dispersed through an extracellular matrix. The main function of this zone is to connect or anchor the epiphyseal plate to the epiphysis of the bone. These cells do not divide and do not contribute to bone growth. In the zone of proliferating cartilage, we see in this layer larger chondrocytes that are stacked on top of each other like coins and have a column-like appearance. These cells are dividing and secreting extracellular matrix, allowing the bone to grow interstitially as new chondrocytes are added to the epiphyseal side of the growth plate. These new chondrocytes also replace those that die as they are calcified later on as the new bone forms. This balance helps maintain a constant thickness to the plates throughout bone growth. The term proliferating refers to the active division of these cells. In the zone of hypertrophic cartilage, we see larger cells in this layer. They're mature chondrocytes that are still appearing column-like and they are no longer dividing. In the final zone of calcified cartilage, we see thin layers of mostly dead chondrocytes due to the surrounding calcified extracellular matrix. This area is actively worked upon by osteoclasts that break down this calcified cartilage. Also, osteoblasts move into the region to produce new bone matrix through endochondral ossification and new blood vessels arrive into the area. This zone is on its way to becoming the new diaphysis that becomes part of the existing diaphysis of the bone. When the person reaches the end of adolescence, the epiphyseal plates close, the chondrocytes stop dividing, and the remaining cartilage becomes bone. Growth can no longer occur. When this happens, the plate is now referred to as a bony landmark called the epiphyseal line. Bone also grows in thickness, or diameter, through a process called appositional growth. This process occurs at the bone's surface when osteogenic cells in the periosteum, the outer covering of the bone, differentiate into osteoblasts that begin producing collagen fibers and extracellular matrix. As the matrix builds up, the osteoblasts become osteocytes. 
As this occurs, bony ridges called periosteal ridges develop around a periosteal blood vessel. As these ridges grow and enlarge, they create a groove for the periosteal blood vessel. The ridges continue to grow gradually, fold over, and eventually fuse with each other, forming a tunnel that completely surrounds the blood vessel. The periosteum that was previously on the outside of the bone is now endosteum that forms the inner lining of the tunnel. Osteoblasts in the new endosteum start producing bone matrix, forming new concentric lamellae. The new lamellae are deposited inward toward the blood vessel, which gradually fills in the tunnel, creating a new osteon. Osteoblasts under the periosteum start producing new circumferential lamellae, which continues to increase the bone's thickness as the bone grows outward. Appositional growth continues as more periosteal blood vessels become enclosed in grooves, then tunnels, new osteons are created, and the process continues. As new bone is being created by osteoblasts on the outer surface of the bone during appositional growth, osteoclasts are breaking down old bone tissue lining the medullary cavity. So as the bone grows in thickness, the medullary cavity increases in diameter. Bone is constantly regenerating itself throughout life by the process of remodeling where new bone tissue replaces old bone tissue or bone that is damaged through injury. New bone is stronger and less likely to fracture compared to old bone. Also, bone will thicken when stressed, such as during exercise, which also increases the overall strength of the bone. 5% of the body's bone mass is being remodeled during any given moment. Bone regions that experience more stress, strain, wear, and tear are remodeled faster than other bone areas. For example, the distal portion of the femur, the thigh bone, closest to the knee is remodeled about three times a year, while bone in the femur's diaphysis, shaft, won't be remodeled significantly during one's lifetime. Two major steps are involved in bone remodeling. Bone resorption which is the breakdown of bone's extracellular matrix, including the collagen protein fibers and minerals, by the osteoclasts, and bone deposition, which is carried out by the osteoblasts, which are secreting new matrix to the bone. When osteoclasts begin bone resorption, they clamp down to the bone surface at the periosteum or endosteum with their highly folded, ruffled border side facing the bone. This forms a tight seal at the edges of the cell. Then the osteoclast secretes its lysosomal digestive enzymes and acids into the sealed off area, which dissolves the collagen proteins and minerals such as calcium and phosphorus. The osteoclast takes in the minerals to its cell through endocytosis, transports them through the cell by vesicles, and then secretes the minerals out of the opposite side of the cell through exocytosis into the interstitial fluid surrounding the osteoclast. The minerals now diffuse into nearby blood capillaries and enter the bloodstream. Osteoblasts then move into this area and begin to rebuild the bone by depositing new matrix. There are several major factors that influence bone growth and remodeling, including diet and hormones. Bone requires abundant minerals from the diet in order to produce new bone matrix during growth and remodeling, especially calcium and phosphorus, along with manganese, magnesium, and fluoride. Vitamins are also essential, with vitamin A helping to trigger osteoblast activity. Vitamin C, K, and B12 are needed in order to secrete 
new collagen proteins, and vitamin D helps increase the absorption of calcium from the GI tract into the blood. Hormones are also very important to bone growth throughout one's early life. Insulin-like growth factors, or IGFs, stimulate osteoblast activity, increase cell division at the epiphyseal plate, and increase protein synthesis, along with the hormone insulin secreted by the pancreas, to produce more collagen fibers. IGFs are secreted by the liver and bone tissue itself, and are produced as a result of secretion of another hormone called human growth hormone, or HGH, from the anterior pituitary gland. The thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, are secreted by the thyroid gland and help increase osteoblast activity to further enhance bone growth. The sex hormones also strongly influence bone growth. These hormones are secreted during puberty and include estrogens, secreted by the ovaries, and androgens like testosterone, secreted by the testes. Women generally have higher levels of estrogens and lower levels of androgens, while men have higher levels of androgens and lower levels of estrogens. Androgens can be secreted by the adrenal glands in both men and women, while estrogens can be produced from androgens in the adipose tissue. Both of these hormones increase the activity of the osteoblasts, which results in the deposition of more matrix and trigger the growth spurt that occurs in our teens. Estrogens also influence sexual changes in the female skeleton, including pelvic widening to accommodate pregnancy. Estrogen also acts as an off switch to growth at the epiphyseal plates, triggering their closures in our late teens and early 20s.